So um, let's get in the car and see what Alma is doing with the meerkat. What Alma is doing is, is uh, she gathers meerkat from all over the country. I know Professor Anne Rasa has been uh, quite well known with, with um, meerkat reared on the Kalari Road. But Alma is also registered and it's, it's quite an issue because she must drive to, to the out or the corners of South Africa to collect a meerkat that's been um, kept in captive as, as, uh, as pets. They've got a very scientific way of keeping the, the um, meerkat together. There's some of them that's too aggressive. So what will, what will happen is they'll take the, the meerkat from uh, one of these two enclosures and then uh, load them in the, in the bucky. They're loading the, the frame of the cage that they're going to release the meerkat in. Uh, it's one of, the, one of the more beautiful forms in the area. And what we, we're doing here is, is they putting up the cage and then digging a hole so that the cage is, is a bit sunken. They dig themselves out and then they go back into the hole and that's sort of a protection for them until they, they start roaming and um, find out whether there's other colonies and, and determine a new territory. The Kids of Johan is, uh, is uh, very interested in, in getting involved. And what a nice thing because there's a huge education of the kids as well with the meerkat that's been released. I'd like this message to probably get all over the world because the meerkat it's stolen and exploited all over the world as a pet. And what happens is it's too aggressive and the people just leave them. They kill them and they do all sorts of funny things like pulling all their teeth, chopping off their tails to tame them, etc. So yeah, what they do is, is they... they um, uh, they they put the cage and then they they would later on dig out. As a matter of fact, today they will dig them out. But let's hear what what Alma says about about um, the release and about the meerkat in general. In the enclosures, we put out um, kitten pellets. It's a very concentrated and well balanced kitten pellet. That's all we supply for them to force them to start searching for food. We do find that they struggle sometimes to find food in the beginning. Um, they will dig a whole day and find nothing because they do not know where to find the food. But that, um, as they stay in the fold, that gets better and they eventually stop eating the pellets and that's when we take it away and we take the enclosure away. What are their predators? Uh, why are they um, so scarce these days? Is it mostly humans, or is it natural conditions as well? Um, with well, the, the trade has made a big difference in their numbers, but we also find that there are diseases that now is now um, killing quite a few colonies, and then also. Um, we think that uh, poison that we put out in carcasses for for other predators like jackal and, and caracal um, has also killed quite a lot of meerkats in the felt because they will go to a carcass and they will eat from it. Uh, okay, tell us, um, how, how do you actually survive? I mean, I see you've been driving with vehicles and you're collecting meerkats from all over South Africa. Um, and you got the rehabilitation center, and you're driving out here in your cages. Have you got any sponsors, or do you need any sponsors? At the moment, we are really in dire need of sponsors. Um, we do get people that make donations, um, but it's not a constant every month donation that comes in. So we do struggle to survive sometimes. Um, and you know, the meerkats, the food is expensive, extremely expensive. The medical cost is very high. We, our closest vet is 180 kilometers from us. Um, so, you know, and we've only got one vehicle, which makes it very dif difficult um, because we, we need to travel. We travel up to the Western Cape. We've traveled down to Natal to fetch meerkats and we can't always do it together um, because we need a hands on at the center. And that does you know make a problem for us to, to do our job the farmers around in this area is uh, take responsibility over the meerkat um, like Johan Reineke is from from Ascom and uh, um, uh, let's let's hear why Johan actually um, gets involved releasing the meerkat on his farm Johan I, I see you you've You've, as a farmer and a businessman, you've decided to, to rescue this um, group of meerkats and release them on your farm. Um, why would you do that? Is there a need for meerkat? Um, what's the reason? Well, we, we tend to see there's a decrease in, in population of the meerkats. 
um, and that is something that is really worrying. Uh, you don't see them in the field anymore as much as, as in our young, younger days. What do you think is the, the cause over here, Johan, in, in a felt like this close to areas of Askab and the entrance to the Kalari, why, to the park, why, why would they get less? It's a known fact that the local people sell them for extra money. Um, you can't really blame them. I think it's more people buying them that, that's causing the market for this. But, but yeah, it, it's, it's because of people catching them and selling them to tourists. So, Johan, is there, is there, is there a, a need for, for releasing meerkat like this on farmers? In other words, if we approach other farmers to do that, uh, is, it, is it good for the environment? Is it? Yeah, I, I really think so. I th I, you, you will see there's an there's a imbalance in the, in the ecosystem. Find more mice and all of that. That's, it's the, the, um, yeah, it's good for the, for the ecotourism and, and, and the balance in, in the ecotourism. And you, this is also a guest house, John, a guest farmer, is it right? Yes, yes. Yeah, What's it called? Uh, Mari, Mari Guest Mari Guest, and, yeah. and on what road are you? Where are you? It's on the R31 uh, Fansalthris Askam Road, about 12 kilometers from Askam.